Hey everybody, it's Scott Mann, CEO and founder of the Stability Institute, and I appreciate you dialing in to this video blog where we are talking about the aspects of making a difference at the strategic level. Now, like I wrote in my blog, there um, are a lot of you out there that are watching this that are wondering probably if you can make a difference at higher levels. And, you know, if there's anything that I took out of the last 14 or so years of trying to defeat violent extremism in this, in this crazy war, is that uh, you can. You, you can make a difference, um, a very impactful difference, way above your pay grade, way above your current level of work. But it, uh, it, takes, it takes some effort. It's not easy. And, and frankly, uh, if you try to use the traditional kind of industrial age methods, uh, the hierarchical methods of, of, of making change or creating change or strategic uh, impacts um, at, at, at your pay grade, if you're a practitioner, uh, it's tough. You're going to be confounded uh, more than you'll be uh, rewarded by that. Uh, it's just the way it is. It's the, the process that we, we have today for, um, for, you know, for our structure um, and our processes is, is, is frankly outdated and disconnected from the types of problems that we have. Um, there's another reason for that as well, and, and it's simply that the problems uh, that we face today, that you face today, are much tougher problems than anything that we've seen before in our past. Now, America and civil society has always had to deal with, um, you know, rough problems, um, but they were fairly structured problems. You, you might be dealing with a really nasty enemy, or you might be dealing with uh, a really tough situation, but it was a fairly structured situation. It was just challenging. Today, the problems that you face out there in the rough areas are wicked problems. They're unstructured problems. They're problems that are very complex, very ambiguous. Uh, and so it's really difficult for one organization or one person to have all the answers. In fact, it's nearly impossible. Uh, the, 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 the term wicked problem doesn't represent evil. It just represents tremendous complexity. Um, so that's, that's one issue. And then also, there's a level of complexity within our own structure, within our own process, uh, whether it's the United States or the coalition or our allies. Uh, man, we are so organizationally complicated, it's hard to know which way is up, isn't it? I mean, have you, have you looked at some of the line and block organizational charts from NATO over in Afghanistan or, you know, stuff we do together in Europe? I mean, it's horrible. Um, and the private sector, frankly, isn't much better. Uh, we are just so complex in how we're structured and organized. There are so many uh, gaps and seams and cells and silos that compartmentalize our actions. It's, it's literally discovery learning every second of the day. Um, and that adds to, so when you have a wicked problem, you're, you're out there, you're the practitioner, right? Alone and unafraid in these rough places, on the edges, on the periphery, trying to, uh, to do good work, um, you're facing a problem that is enormous, it's complex, it's much bigger in scope and scale than anything you're really uh, suited to deal with. And then above you, you've got this behemoth of a structure that is supposed to be your higher headquarters or your corporate headquarters um, that is, you know, is your reach back and it's so convoluted and complex you don't even know where to start. So you've got a wicked problem in front of you. You've got an organizational complexity above you and behind you. And it's a very confounding place to be uh, for the, today's stability advisor uh, and today's stability practitioner. So that's what you're up against. Now, how in the world do you change that? I mean, how do you achieve some kind of change in something as difficult as that? Well, there's three steps to it, and there's three basic steps to it. But because I'm getting old and blind, I'm going to have to throw my glasses on here and look at my little cheat sheet. Oh, yeah, that never gets old. I'll just do that one more time. There we go. There's three steps to it. Uh, the first one is you got to build a tribe. Uh, you've got to build a tribe of folks who, who kind of see the problem the same way, who are passionate about the problem, um, and who can come together and lend their unique perspective uh, and their unique capability 
to solving that problem. And the, the more diverse your tribe, the more relevant it will be against this wicked problem. Now see, therein lies the rub because we all were brought up to basically put all of our stock, all of our eggs in the basket of our organization. It, it Frankly, you know, we talk a lot about interagency cooperation and all that stuff, but you and I both know that uh, we're still not real good at that. And that frankly, the people at the more senior levels are the ones that are even worse at it. And, and because they, they're entrenched in this industrial age mentality. So, um, you know, building a tribe is tough. It's, 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 it's uh, hard work. Seth Godin's book, Tribes, is a great read. If you haven't read it, I would strongly recommend that. But you got to build a tribe of, uh, of kind of like-minded folks from various organizations. It does need to be diverse. Um, and, and that tribe should also consist of a, a, a two key players. And let me tell you what they are. It should consist of catalysts and champions. So a catalyst is someone who is a natural born connector. Uh, I'm a catalyst. I've spent the last five or six years of my life honing those skills, but it's someone who's very comfortable connecting people and organizations around a problem. Let me tell you, if you're a catalyst or if you know a catalyst, they'll be the person that says, oh, you know what, um, so-and-so, yeah, you've absolutely got to meet them. I'll introduce you guys immediately. And then they do, and then they get out of the way. That's a catalyst, someone who instinctively can get their head around the problem, see what needs to happen, connect the right people around it, and then they move and get out of the way. They usually don't care about who gets the credit. Catalysts are essential to building tribes. A tribe without catalysts is just a bunch of people who stand around and admire the problem. You also need champions. Champions are like, um, they're like senior leaders in some cases. They might be actors, they might be authors. Uh, Stephen Pressfield is a great champion for many of the things that we do in the special operations and stability world. He, he uses his position to advocate for things like bottom up. Um, he's not in any political office or hold position, but, but he's a great champion. Uh, a champion is usually someone who can bring to bear authorities, resources, knowledge, access or placement in support of a very important initiative. And so a champion uh, swings a big stick. They can garner energy. They do get the credit a lot of times for things, and they should. Um, a champion is someone who is going to, to, to bring it home for you. They're someone who will, will garner support, can, can throw their weight around and get momentum, and can weigh in at the right time. Uh, champions are really important to a tribe, and you've got to cultivate those relationships too. You've got to seek them out. Not every senior person is a champion um, because champions have to trust their catalysts. They have to trust and empower those below them. So uh, your tribe is an interesting, interesting organization. Um, you know, it, it basically is the right people from various organizations, uh, and it consists of catalysts and champions. They're either connectors or they're people who can weigh in and, and lend, uh, lend resources to a problem. Okay, so building your tribe is number one. The next thing you've got to do is you've got to frame the problem. So if you're trying to achieve strategic change, strategic impact on a really tough problem, build your tribe. Number two, frame your problem. Because remember when I, I took some time to talk about how challenging the problems are that we face today, um, you know, the senior leaders that are going to have to make decisions that will weigh in on these problems and that will cut resources loose and things like that, if you can't frame the problem to them, hell, if you can't frame the problem to a champion, uh, then you'll never get off the ground. I, you know, I firmly believe that many of the challenges that we ran into with village stability operations late in the war when we pulled out of the villages, uh, the villages was because we failed to frame the problem. Um, so you've got to be able to articulate the problem up, down, sideways, and everyone needs to kind of see it the same way. Because problems are complex today, because they're so wicked, it's not intuitive to everybody. Uh, if I work in one organization and you work in another organization, maybe your development and maybe I'm special ops, we may not necessarily see the problem the same way. We're looking at the same problem, but we have organizational biases and cultures and perspectives and charters that make us kind of see the problem uh, with a very limited view. So it's almost like, have you ever seen the pictures of art that have little slivers above them uh, and you pull one sliver back and you can see a little bit more of the, the art that's beneath it? 
and then the other person can come up from their organization and maybe they can pull two slivers off and now you have a bigger picture and then the more organizations that can come up and pull their respective sliver off of that piece of art eventually you can see the whole problem now there's several key things about that that make that so important one is that you're bringing the right people from the right organizations in very early around the problem you're framing it in such a way that um, you all kind of frame it together and you're discovering this collectively uh, this will serve you well later on when you try to find solutions and you're not trying to go back to a parochial organization and convince them that this is what the problem is. So you're actually discovering it together. Uh, there's also a kind of a collective unity that comes around from diverse organizations when you frame a problem together. So framing the problem in such a way that you're not going to solve it, but you all start to see it the same way. You all start to see the essence of the problem holistically, not just from your organizational perspective. That is a very, very big deal when you're dealing with these problems. And if you're going to make a strategic impact uh, from the trenches, I can promise you, if you can't frame the problem across organizational lines, you'll never do it. The third step that's essential in this process, we've, we've now built our tribe. Um, we've framed the problem, is to swarm on the problem. So we've built our tribe. Our tribe has grown stronger and more relevant as we've framed the problem using diverse organizational perspectives. Now it's time to tackle this sucker. Now, um, with an unstructured problem, for example, like, you know, um, instability or food insecurity in Afghanistan, for example, or food insecurity in Syria. That's a major problem that ties into all aspects of informal civil society. There's no one thread that you can pull on that. Um, but the more you frame that problem and you start to understand the grievances and sources of instability that are fueling that problem, then you can bring the right, continue to grow the tribe and swarm on that problem in such a way that everybody is playing their relevant role against that problem. Uh, it's an unstructured problem that requires, frankly, an unstructured solution. If you try to imply some layered, hierarchical, bureaucratic solution, like we're doing in Iraq right now, to a very unstructured problem, then you get what you pay for. You really just get uh, you know, superficial gains, if that, uh, and you actually can make things worse. So a swarm effect is basically everyone in the tribe swarming on the problem, literally swarming and collapsing on the problem in a very collaborative way. And they're doing that from an informed perspective of how they frame the problem together. Now, if you try to swarm on a, on a hard problem with just a bunch of different players and you form the tribe after you frame the problem, it's going to be chaos. I mean, it's going to be, it's going to be a bloodletting that won't lead to anything. But if you collectively and collaboratively frame the problem and then that tribe also swarms on the problem, it's done so from an informed perspective and it has this cataclysmic effect of, of gaining steam. That's exactly how village stability operations went from a six-site tactical science project to a strategic program of record that was endorsed by Karzai, Petraeus, and even sanctioned and funded by Congress. There was a swarm effect on that. You had people that were relevant from different organizations framing the problem and then circling back and swarming on the problem and bringing all their various programs, weight, and, and influence to bear. Um, one other thing I failed to mention on this is that each tribe member needs to really have a pre-existing network. For example, I have my pre-existing network in the special ops community. There's folks that I worked with at USAID who had massive organizational networks behind them. And so when you do that swarm effect, you're actually able to leverage your pre-existing network who already trust you. You already have bona fides with them and they're going to they're gonna go to the mat with you. And so that's really kind of what it looks like um, is, is build your tribe frame the problem, and then swarm on the problem. And it's, it's kind of ugly, uh, but, I, but I tell you, I've seen it work time and time again. And the more you do it, uh, the, the more effective you'll be at it. And the good news is because it's an unstructured problem, you're not going to break anything. You know, you're going to just, the more collaborative you are and the more you build that tribe, the, 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 the more effective you'll be against a, a very, very hard problem. It will work. Uh, uh, trust me, if you'll just give it a shot, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. The last comment I'll make on this is, is related to the tribes. I'll circle back to tribes. Um, you know, tribes, uh, they, they, they're, they're, they're funny animals in this sense, is that they form around a problem and then they can just as quickly collapse after the problem is tamed somewhat. So these are dynamic organizations that ebb and flow. 
Um, there's really no leader in that tribe. There's different contributors and different leaders, but uh, it's a very dynamic organization that exists for the purpose of solving hard problems. Uh, and so the tribe is always evolving, it's always changing, it's always bringing in new relevant members and maybe some fade to the back as if they're no longer relevant to the problem. Uh, but it is a, a living, breathing organism that is critical to, to achieving strategic effects. And, and they do have to be like-minded, passionate people who at least have a common view of wanting to solve the problem. You don't want parochial spear chunkers uh, in your tribe. That, that's just going to bring it down. It's got, you've got to have can-do kind of folks that can get it done. But you know, at the end of the day, man, I tell you, um, I have seen what you guys do out there. I've seen the work you do. You can absolutely make strategic differences on these problems that are coming our way. Um, I know you can, and I know it's frustrating at times, but there is a science to this, and we are getting better at it. And we just need you to keep pushing it forward, keep working at it, and uh, we're going to get there. So I, I hope this video served you a little bit. Um, I appreciate so much what you're doing out there, all the great work that you're doing. Just know that I'm in your tribe, and I'll always be in your tribe. And until next time, this is Scott Mann, CEO and founder of the Stability Institute. Thanks for watching.